Modulo, or mod, is a way of dividing numbers and getting the remainder. Let's look at an example. 10 divided by 3 is 3.33333 recurring. You can see that it doesn't divide evenly, which means there will be a remainder. A simple way to see what the remainder would be is to break the first number, the number 10, into groups the size of the second number, the number 3. As you can see, we can break 10 into three groups of three. Unfortunately, we have one piece remaining that can't be made into a group of three. This is our remainder, and the number modulo will return. Mod can be used for a lot of different things, but one of the most important things it's used for is cycles. Things like degrees in a circle, or time. Once something reaches a maximum, we want it to reset to its minimum and count up again. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, I've created some objects here in different rooms. I want to show you how mod can be used for degrees, or time, or frames, or really anything you want to use it for. Inside my object for degrees, I'm going to be drawing a circle. Let's drop this down here and look inside. So most of this is just setting up some variables or setting how it's going to be drawn. The part that matters is down here where I draw the text onto the screen. I'm going to draw D. This is my direction or angle inside the circle. I'm going to draw it two different ways. I'm going to draw just D, which is just my direction, so that's 0 all the way to 360 and then we'll just keep counting. Or I'm going to write D mod 360. This is setting the maximum of my cycle, which means once D is equal to 360, it'll reset itself to zero and start counting again from zero. There are two ways to write mod in GameMaker. You can write out the actual word mod, or you can use the percent sign. Either one will work. For this example, I'm just going to write mod. Now, the easiest way to show this in action is to hop into the room and see what it does. Now that we're in the room for this game, I've got angle 0, angle 0. Sounds confusing because I didn't name them anything different, but the first angle is the D, just the direction, and the second one is D mod 360. Now I'm going to use the mouse wheel to increase the angle of the line in the circle by 10. So as it goes around, you can see it incrementing both evenly. But once I get to 350, when I increment one more time by 10, the first line here will equal 360, and the second one will go right back down to zero. This is because we're using mod with our direction. There we go. This one will keep increasing, counting up in tens, as it goes around the circle in degrees. And this number will keep resetting to zero whenever it gets back to 360. So if I keep going around the circle, there we go. One more time, we're at 350, or 710 if we keep incrementing. Once I get back to my starting position, we're at zero again. Now you can see this works a lot like time. In fact, this is a lot like a clock. I'm just going the other direction. You would start at 12 and go all the way around the clock and hit 12 again, which is zero after 24 hours, and then you go to the first hour again, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, if you're using a 24-hour clock. In fact, I have an example of time as well. Let's use the time room. In my object for time, I've got seconds, minutes, and time. This is just going to be a counter. And inside my draw event, this is all just setting up my text. What I'm going to do is increment time by one for every step of my game. I'm going to make sure that seconds equals time, whatever that is. And then if seconds mod, remember mod can be the percent sign or the actual word mod mod. If seconds mod 60 is equal to zero, that means it's not returning a remainder. That means it is divisible by 60 evenly and seconds is not equal to zero, I'm going to increment minutes by one. So every time seconds hits 60, increment minutes by one. This is what actually happens in time. And then I'm going to display seconds mod 
60, and minutes mod 60, much like how I did with the degrees of the circle. So that when I draw this to the screen, right here, I'm going to draw it out in the middle of the room, um, minus 32 and plus 32. We'll get seconds and minutes, but clamped here using mod to 60. So once it hits 60, it goes back down to zero. And here's what it looks like in action. As you can see, the first number there is incrementing really, really quickly because it's going through every step of my game. And every time it hits 60, it's dropping back down to zero, starting again. But more importantly, I got it to increment minutes by one. Now, if I let minutes go up to 60, they would also drop back down to zero. I'm not going to wait here that long. But you can see how this can work. It is resetting itself and also affecting something else in the game. In this case, it's the minutes. Another way I've used it in my own games is with frames. Now I've got this object here, I've probably seen it before, and I'm just going to start time at zero again. And in my step event, I'm going to increment time by one so that we have some sort of timer to reference because something always has to be increasing. And I'm going to have two different circles in my room. I've got one left of center and one right of center. And it says if it's left of center, do this cool uh, scaling effect. Uh, randomly, uh, half of my scale and 1.5 times my scale. So it kind of jiggles around both in the X and Y scale. The difference is this one here will jiggle the same way, but only if time mod 4 is equal to 0. What I'm telling it to do is only change the scale of the instance of the object if time is evenly divisible by 4. So it's not returning a remainder at all. So if time divided by 4, or in this case mod 4, does not return a remainder, then do the code inside here, which is jiggling around, like this one. Let's see what the two different objects look like inside the room. Now, as you can see, the one on the left side is jiggling around every step of the game. It's actually kind of hard to look at. But this one is jiggling around every fourth step of the game. Now, this can be useful because you can set it to something like two. So just do it every second step of the game, in which case it'll happen twice as fast as before. But this actually might produce a desired effect. Now, affecting the scale is kind of weak, but you may have something else in your game that you only want to happen on every second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever step of the game, and you're referencing a counter that is moving every step of the game. In which case, you just tell it to check the time, mod it by your increment, whatever you want to do, dividing by two, three, four, or five, however many numbers you want. And if it equals zero, which means no remainder, then do the code. So that means it is evenly divisible by two. So that means if time is equal to two, four, six, eight, if it's equal to three, five, or seven, this will not return zero, and therefore this code will not happen. So these are two different ways you can use mod. You can use it as a cycle, which is very common. Uh, it's used for time or degrees, because that's a circle. Or you can use it to modify other things, um, like I've shown here, where you're checking time, and if it's divisible by a certain number, do some sort of code.